Now, when you start looking at issues in the overall process, this is where I can start adding additional issues. Now, issues are an iOS or an iPad or iPhone or a mobile device only currently uh, feature. So I'm going to go in and do that with a mobile device. But before I do, I want to talk a little bit about adding additional users. So we start thinking about the overall spectrum of all the individuals that are part of the overall project. I may have specific individuals that I want to add. And one of those individuals happens to be a designer that I want to use. So when I'm looking at this particular uh, folder, the plans folder, I want to initialize or add some permissions. And I'm going to invite John Designer to this particular project. What's nice is I can add not only by the username, but also by the role. So if I tell him that I want to use the project manager, I will be able to select all individuals that have been defined as a project manager or a project engineer into the company. Or maybe I want to look for all individuals that are part of ABC Engineering. I can actually select all of individuals by ABC Engineering. So I can assign permissions based on who they work for and what their general role is in the overall organization. But for now, I am just going to add John Designer into the overall spectrum. And I want to add the level of permissions for John as being simply he can now view documents. So view and edit. So just by dragging that bar across and selecting, I can actually assign permissions. I will also go into the project files. And I'm going to add the same individual. So John Designer into the root of my project files, meaning when I add that individual as a John Designer into the root, taking just a couple of seconds, my apologies for the delay. A little longer than I had anticipated. Permission already exists. So let's try this one more time. Designer, John Designer. And I'm going to add that individual. Permission already exists. Interesting. Um, now, if I continue on into this other uh, view, for some reason or another, today it is just not playing well with me. Uh, I'm going to add him into this particular folder again, John Designer, see if this has changed. There we go. So adding John Designer into here, and I'm going to tell them that they can see the folder structure, but they can't really see anything else. Uh, but in the architectural folder, I will look at this directory and say I want to promote them to be able to view edit in this particular folder. So we add inherited permissions. So in the root level they are general over general permissions under publish. That means that they can see the folder structure but can't see the contents of it. But in the architectural they can see and view and edit in the information that exists inside this folder. Now that's very quickly just adding in a couple of very simple use cases. Um, I do want to go back to the plans section again, and when I talked about this particular directory containing my Revit project, I would also like to now upload a new document. The document I want to bring in is in my project folder, and I'm going to bring in a multi-page PDF. This multi-page PDF that I'm going to bring in is I want to assign to it a title block. And I want to add first a title block that simply states I have um, certain information that I need to have um, in, incorporated. Now, I don't have anything yet, so I'm going to need to upload this. And then it will email me when the document has been uploaded, but I want to add in title block data in a second here. So as it's processing, so it's uploaded the PDF to the site, it's now processing the information to extract additional data. 
while I'm waiting for this, what I would like to do is look a little bit into the issue tracking side of the, the spectrum. And to do that, I'm going to switch over to my iPad and And I am having wonderful issues here. Okay, here we go. I am going to bring my iPad front and center onto the screen. And in here, I'm going to launch into my Docs application. So I'm launching as John Designer. And what has happened now is the, the John Designer has now been given permission to access this particular site. So they can now download the current version or I can not bother with downloading them. And I'm going to just say, go into my settings. And I can tell this for this particular project, uh, I'm not gonna do any downloads today. And I'm just gonna use these, in, these documents as if they exist on, this, on the cloud. So right now I'm looking at the same document that I looked at earlier, uh, the RBT file. So you'll notice that here it's the architectural RBT file. I'm going to go into the same lower level item, and in here I should still see my markup, which I do. So here's the markup information that was developed on the cloud. But what I need to do is I want to actually itemize or highlight a little bit more information. As the designer, I can add an issue. Just by tagging into the issue, I can select the location and say, I currently have this issue, or maybe I'm just going to drag this into a new location um, and I'm going to say in the x-ray room ensure shielding properly spec All right, so I want to put in information about the shielding. I want to make sure that the shielding is properly specified in that location. And I can tell that this location happens to be in my x-ray room. And I can assign it to a specific individual. So I'm going to assign this information to, my, to myself. And I'm going to give myself a specific due date as being the end of the week. Once I create, initially when I create these particular uh, rooms or these issues, they always come up under draft mode. So they always start in draft and they say save this. So we now have located a particular issue. So if I want to look at the issue listing in the sidebar, it will show you all the different particular in issue lists that are in there. It will show items based on optional search criteria. So notice here that we have an options bar. The options bar allows me to sort based on any um, status or any assignee. So I can look for all issues that have been assigned to me so that when I come in here, I see only the items that I need to work on. So once I so I'm going to select this item and I'm going to promote this from a draft to an open issue. So it changes or flags that particular item as being an open issue so I can now display and, and highlight that information. Now, if I look at this data back on my, um, on my desktop device or on my browser, it will show information about that particular view. So I will see in here, uh, we'll have in my lower level, you will see that particular issue has now been flagged back to my document. So I have all that information being carried over. I have all the data about that particular issue being carried over. However, I cannot actually act on any of the issues that are in the, uh, on the browser-based environment. All the enact enacting tools are inside of the iOS application. So as I go back into my iPad, I can I can even log out as a particular user, or I can, uh, if I log in as John Jansen and I select this item, I can define and really go in here and add some additional commentary, um, add some data. I could even 
close this particular issue. Now, being the publisher as John Designer, the publisher can also close the issue. However, the typically the workflow would be for the user, for the assignee to be the individual to set this thing to be either answered. So normally you would answer the question and then some of the administrator, project administrator would then close that particular project or uh, issue. So this gives us the ability to track that information. So issues are specifically an iOS or an iPad based environment. So when I go back into my site, remember I did do an upload of that PDF. Now what happens is we finish the processing of that PDF, but it's asking us we need to be able to attach to it some additional data. So I'm going to use add title block. And what this will do is it will allow me to scan through the current documents. I'll view the current document. And I'm going to look at all the different sheets. So in this particular sheet, the S01, this is where my title block actually is. So I'm going to define a scanning area. And that definition is going to be essentially right here. So that is my defining area where my title block data will exist. The reason I want to do this is because I want to give a baseline name to my title block and say this is going to be my D-sized title block. And I want to select an area. And these area selection is very simply, I'm going to look at this area right here for my sheet number. So it's going to do an OCR based on that area. And if it's textual information, it's simple. It grabs the text. If it's graphic information, it will do a contextual analysis or an OCR analysis of that space. So I'm now also going to look at the 3D and get the name up here. So it's now processed both my number and name. If I had additional fields in my grouping, which I don't believe I do, I don't in this case, I could add additional items. So I could pull out my drawn by or checked by values and even the project number and the date. And I can extrapolate all of that data directly into my attributes that are displayed in here. So I'm going to say this is all set. I'll hit save. And it's now going to process, reprocess that PDF and start extracting that data from my system and be able to display that into my title block sheets or into the attributes that are displayed on the sheet. So as this is processing, what I wanted to do is, is really uh, review on the idea that Docs is a way for us to share information, whether we are on a desktop, on a browser environment, or on my iPad, or even on my iPhone, being able to contribute information, be able to extract documents, and be able to reference, mark up, and create issues on any one of these documents, and tie them into the overall spectrum of the product release. And this is what's unique about this. Once I've applied a title block, maybe I don't have the application quite 100% correct. So we have the opportunity to review and, in this situation, correct any information that might be happening on my title block. So I can now look at and see. And I can see this is also incorrect, so I'm going to add in. So it found that there was a bit of an error, a bit of a problem in this condition. So we have the ability to manually override various different conditions as I scroll through the document list. So this is S001. I'm going to change it to S01. And once we're done with all of the error checking or the, the validating of this information, I hit the publish button and it pushes the information up into docs. Sorry, that was my final piece that I needed to cover on this piece.